our upcycled life. Want to turn some scrap wood into cash? In this video, I'm going to show you some of the hottest selling DIY projects that anyone can make. They're easy, affordable scrap wood crafts that will make you some extra money. So let's get ready to maximize your profits with minimal tools and materials, and let's transform your crafting passion into a thriving business. We've got lots of work. Let's get started. My first project, I'm working with a scrap piece of wood that I've saved for this exact project. I've decided to create a wooden box because they're really easy to put together and they sell really well for me. First I've cut the base piece and you can adjust it to how big you want your box to be. Now I'm going to cut the sides. I've measured the length of the outside board and I'm going to cut two pieces to match that length. Once I have those two pieces, I'll measure the space between them and cut two more pieces to fill in the ends. I absolutely love creating these wooden boxes as gifts or for any occasion, whether it's Christmas or Halloween. They can be filled with beautiful seasonal decor, or of course you can use them just for everyday purpose. And the best part, you can easily put these together in just a few minutes. I always like to give these little boxes a distressed look. It adds an authentic rustic feel. There's several ways that you can do this, but I like just to use a hammer and just tap around it to give it that weathered appearance. Now it's time to bring it all together. I've got my trusty Gorilla Wood Glue ready and I'm gonna start by ensuring all the pieces fit along the base. I've cut all the wood using my chop saw, which I actually found at a pawn shop. This is the best place to find tools at a fraction of the cost and they'll still be really good quality. And I also found this Brad Nailer for just $30. It works like a charm, but don't worry if you don't have one. You can always use screws or you can opt for the classic hammer and nails to put this piece together. There are plenty of options to choose from, so just go with what works for you and the tools that you have. To secure all these pieces, I'll apply a small amount of wood glue and then I'm gonna use my Brad Nailer to secure them in place. Once that's done, we'll be ready to attach the base. If you're interested in earning some extra cash with DIY projects, the ones featured in this video are a fantastic starting point. They're incredibly simple to assemble and they won't break the bank, especially if you can find free wood. Also, these projects happen to be among my top sellers. The best part is you don't need an extensive collection of tools or special products to complete them. Plus, they offer endless possibilities for customizing. You have so many choices when it comes to finishing these projects. You can leave them just the plain wood, you can paint them in vibrant colors, or you can even add graphics. The possibilities truly are endless. Find out what's selling best in your local market. In my experience, I've found that that rustic charm of the plain wood is selling really well right now. After putting the box all together, the next step is to give it a really good sanding with some 80 grit sandpaper. Now comes the exciting part, staining. I highly recommend trying out a budget-friendly and fantastic alternative called coffee staining. Trust me, it works wonders. All you need is some instant coffee and some hot water. Simply rub that mixture onto the wood and you're gonna see the grains come alive with beautiful color. It's an affordable option that provides stunning results. This is going to save you from having to purchase expensive stains. Give it a try and you'll be amazed at how well it works. To complete the box, I wanted to add a hardware detail on the front. Luckily, I found a rusty latch in my stash and I attached it to the box using some screws. It gave a nice finishing touch. This is such a simple DIY project and it's a great way to make some extra cash to sell them. So try this out. This DIY project is incredibly simple and so easy to do. All you need is a scrap piece of wood a hammer, a chisel, a pair of pliers, some nails, and we're going to create that old rustic look, putting dents in it, weathered holes. And before moving on, I'm gonna take it outside and give it a sanding with some 80 grit sandpaper just to soften it up around the edges. For staining, I found a great deal at our local hardware store, a $2 mist tint in a really beautiful color. I'm going to apply that stain on the wood and it looks fantastic. Now onto my stash of hardware. I keep a toolbox filled with full of 
various handles and knobs and pulls that I can browse through when I want to find something that's going to be a perfect fit. I think these pulls will work perfectly. I also have a container filled with nails and screws that I know come in handy for these type of projects. I'm going to simply screw these two handles onto that piece of wood and that's it. It's that easy. To finish it off and protect the wood, I'm sealing it with some poly acrylic sealer. This DIY is so versatile. They make a great addition to a kitchen for holding scrubbers or dish soap, or you can put them out on your dining room table or out in the patio. It's an effortless DIY that's both functional and has a lot of charm. Another DIY project that can help you earn extra cash is making breadboards. These have been incredibly popular for years and the best part is they're super easy to make. I have a breadboard that I keep in my craft room and it serves as a handy template. Now I have this scrap piece of wood that's full of character. It has nicks and dings and it has that aged look already. I'm simply going to trace the shape of the cutting board onto it. I can get two cutting boards out of this one piece of wood, making it a really profitable DIY. I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to use my jigsaw and carefully cut out the shapes. Don't worry about feeling intimidated by jigsaw. They're actually quite easy to use. And if you don't have one already, I recommend checking out your local pawn shop for some great deals. You might be surprised at how affordable they can be. You can also find brand new ones really reasonably priced on Amazon. I'll provide that link down below in the description. Now that I've finished cutting them out, remember not to throw those leftover pieces. We can use them for another DIY project later on. I'll stash them away for now. Next, I'll take these breadboards outside and I'll use some 80 grit sandpaper to give them a smooth, polished finish. These boards already have so much character, so I don't want to sand them too much. I want to preserve that charming, worn out look. Most of these breadboards are primarily intended for decorative purposes. However, if you happen to be working with brand new wood and you know its type, I encourage you to do some research, find out how you can make these boards food grade and suitable for use in the kitchen. It's important to ensure that they meet the necessary standards and are safe for food preparation. To enhance the beauty of these boards, I've decided to use some leftover butcher block from a previous project. I'm applying this oil and it really highlights the gorgeous grain of this wood and the end result is simply stunning. For the finishing touch, I'm going to drill a hole in the top, add some twine. One of the bread boards had a crack at the bottom, so I came up with a clever solution to prevent further cracking. I found an old rusty hinge in my stash along with some matching screws. I'm going to attach that hinge right between the crack and the wood. This addition should not only reinforce the board, but it also giving it a charming farmhouse feel. It's these unique touches that make each board one of a kind and it also helps them sell better. Another best-selling DIY and I love making these and the best part is they're incredibly easy to assemble just using scrap wood. For this project I used an old piece of wood that I believe was part of an old dresser along with some leftover ends of 2x4s. With these materials we're going to put everything together and create a fantastic riser. I've got enough material to make two risers so I'm going to cut the 2x4s so they're all the same length. I'm going to sand down that scrap piece of wood that I've cut in half and then we're going to put it all together. 2x4s will serve as an adorable feat on the riser. If you're feeling creative, you can also use spindles or even caster wheels to add a unique touch. Once assembled, these risers become one of my top selling items. To ensure the perfect placement, I'm going to center that 2x4 underneath the wood and then I'm going to use my brad nailer and put it all together. I also added a little bit of wood glue also. To ensure the perfect placement, I'm going to center those 2x4s underneath the wood adding a little bit of wood glue and then brad nailing it into place. 
Now I've mixed up some DIY stain. This is really popular right now and it gives that rustic weathered look that complements that farmhouse or primitive style that everybody wants right now. I have a full tutorial on how to make my DIY stain. I'll put the link to that down below in the description. And to finish it off, I'm adding some dark antiquing wax. It's just going to fill up those little nooks and crannies and give it a really aged look that I'm trying to accomplish. And now I've completed two risers that I know are gonna sell super fast. And if you wanna know how to price your DIYs, I have a full tutorial on the formula that I use. I'll put the link to that down below in the description and you can watch that after this video. I hope these DIY projects have sparked some inspiration. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.